Hello, good evening and welcome to All About Sport, coming to you from the Cabin Crystal Hotel. I'm Louise O'Reilly. Lacken ladies recently had to go to great lengths after its ladies football and camogie league finals were both scheduled for the same day. With a total of 11 dual players expected to compete in both games, this proved impossible. Well, joining me on the show tonight to tell us more about the boycott and the huge attention it has attracted across the county is Marie Brady, Lacken representative. So Marie, thank you very much for joining me on no All About Sport. Marie, it was a big decision that was made recently by the Lacken Ladies Club, but um, just outline some of the reasons and what brought the, the Lacken Ladies to that point. I suppose we didn't have a choice. We had asked both county boards, the Camogie board and the ladies football board to change one of the fixtures and we both boards refused. So we were in a situation where the two clubs had a meeting to decide what we would do. It wasn't physically possible to fulfill both fixtures. And I suppose it's an ongoing issue in ladies sport and with Camogie and football, constant clashes. So we decided, I suppose as a club, that we had to make a stand and we issued a statement to both boards and out on Facebook to let people know what was happening because I suppose at the end of the day we wanted to just play the two games. Oh, absolutely. Um, we had discussed before, if you'd not issued that particular statement and it was on the Thursday before the game on the Sunday, what would have happened? What would have been yeah. the... You know. Well, we had to make a decision on the Thursday night. At that stage, at 10 o'clock Thursday night, neither county boards had come back to us with a decision on the game. And we had to let the ladies county board know 72 hours in advance that we were not fulfilling the fixture or we faced a fine of €5,000 and a six-month suspension. And similarly, in the Camogie, you have to give three days notice. The fines vary from losing home advantage to a financial fine, depending on what the committee decide. Okay, so, uh, you know, a, a big risk there for, for the club with yes. fines and whatnot. Um, so just run us through some of the reasons that you outlined for, for this decision. I'm sure it's a decision that wasn't taken very lightly. No, um, and I'm sure many, many uh, you know, discussions about it, but give us some of the outlines. It uh, definitely reasons. wasn't taken lightly, but 11 dual players cannot compete at, in two games that are pl played basically at the same time. Um, we have a lot of dual players, particularly underage players, and I think a lot of clubs will face this problem in the future. A lot of our players, younger players are all dual players. I suppose we're, our club is one of the strongest dual clubs in the county and we work hard to enable that to happen and to be successful. So we had to take a stand. We have had battles like this before. Last year, I remember the Den Club losing a final because they couldn't fulfil a fixture because there was a clash with ladies football and the Camogie girls never got to play that final and I suppose maybe that club didn't feel strong enough to stand up to it but we felt we had to because we have been successful because we work well as a dual club and if we can do it at club level I don't see why county boards can't do it. Exactly. It's not something that, uh, you know, as you just pointed out there, it's not just something that's happened. It hasn't been just a one-off. Yeah. It's something that has been happening over and over again, but something that you have just dealt with and met it happen. But, yeah. I mean, th this was, you know, it was virtually, it was impossible to, you know, have two games. And just to kind of um, let our viewers know again that the times of the games on the Sunday, just yeah. to, to the how close they were together. The football final was at half twelve in Mullerhorn and the Camogie final was at half one in Kiligary. So just it impossible, impossible unless really. you played half one game yeah. and went to play half of Was another and yeah. rallied down the road. Yeah. In, in just impossible. So um, coming from the, the, the county board, the Camogie, um, Cavan Camogie board and the Cavan Ladies Gaelic Football board, uh, what, 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 did, what was their reaction to this or, and what did they say back to you? I suppose um, there was very little communication back to the club directly. They did issue a statement which we were very disappointed with. I suppose disappoints the wrong word. We were delighted with the outcome that one game was played on the yeah. Sunday and the other game was changed to the Friday evening. Ideal five days between two finals, the way every fixture should be, and we hope it's something that will continue in the future. We were disappointed with other aspects of the statement. Um, you know, the the only reason we couldn't play the two games was because they were on the one day basically with an hour between them. We did have a 21st in the club. It had nothing to do with us not fulfilling the two fixtures. And we were upset that they mentioned that. There was also mention of a hen party. Mm. And w we as a club were unaware what hen party was on. We yeah. also, I suppose, were slightly annoyed over the fact that the county board seen this as us trying to cause tension. The statement was issued deliberately to cause tension. 
our purpose in the statement was the hope that the two county boards would come together each year and meet on a regular basis regarding fixtures and that from this point on we would have no more clashes of fixtures and girls who are willing to commit to two sports and give their all to it get the opportunity to play two sports and not constantly have to make a decision which sport will I play this yeah. week. Sounds like there was a, a huge lack of communication from both yeah. boards and that's something you'd hope would improve going forward. Now the boards did make a statement and they said that they were not happy and expressed their disappointment claiming there is more to the story than meets the eye. You know, you know, what did they mean by that, there's more to well, the story than meets the eye? I suppose we felt that from their statement they were implying that the 21st and the hen party was the reason we weren't willing to fulfil the fixtures. Yeah. That is simply untrue. There was no hen party and the 21st we had asked about a month previous to the Camogie board, would Crucial Law play the game on a Saturday evening because of the 21st? They said no, the game was going ahead on a Sunday. And that's fine. Any club you know, is entitled to request something. If it doesn't happen, you get on and play. I mean, last year, our ladies footballers played the league final the day after Rosie Crowe's wedding. And Rosie Crowe herself, who got married, went out and played. So there is no issue. Personal commitments don't come into us fulfilling fixtures, we f fulfill the fixtures regardless. Like a little bit of, did you feel like a personal attack yes. um, on ladies, um, you know, playing sports in particular, yeah. ladies, camogie and the ladies playing the football, that, yeah. you know, that to use that it, against it def you? It definitely was. You wouldn't see it in men's if there was a clash of fixtures, the reason it wasn't happening. Yeah, it was degrading to women to women's sport to suggest that a hen party or a birthday party would stop you fulfilling a league final in both codes that was very important to us. Like the Camogie, our Camogie club were aiming to do the double this year. We were after a disappointing defeat in the Ulster final by a point and the league final was very important to us. And likewise, the ladies football did want to play their league final. Brilliant. Well, that, uh, so uh, eventually a compromise was reached and the games went ahead um, five days apart. Yes. Okay, so you had a good result with the, the Camogie one. Unfortunately, the ladies um, weren't so successful. But um, following that, you've n now issued a new statement. It hasn't gone public yet, but do you want to just talk us through um, you know, some of the points on that new statement, Marie? I suppose I really have said them already. The main points is the reason we issued the statement and refused to play the games or withdrew from the comp respective finals was because we couldn't physically do it and because it's time for this for dual players to be respected and to allow them to play both codes and um, you know and that's very important to us as a club other clubs are going to face this in the future there's lots of clubs from the support we got on facebook and different media outlets lots of players are facing this every day and it isn't good enough there are enough weeks and enough days to play all these games i suppose the statement we issued um we are going to issue publicly we have issued to the two county boards um almost last the friday before the league final and and um, we haven't got a reply on it but we did ask them that all fixtures from now on are five days apart as was the solution to this because it's the best way of going forward it stops player burnout which is a huge issue yeah. huge huge issue yeah and it is and not just as well within cavan but yeah. uh, you know across, across the country it's been you know big in the media about as you said player burnout and um, so of course you want more communication between the two boards um, stop clashes happening in the future and that all players really I suppose one of the main things was that both all players and all dual players will get to play both games mm. without any issues or having to try and play one in the morning which you've said you've done in the future yeah. you've played you know a morning game yeah. and then played maybe the other game in in the, the evening, evening which I mean is it's crazy it yeah but we yeah. have we have done that in the past I remember our ladies playing the Ulster Club Championship in football in Lacken and us having to get into a car and drive to Lara to play a league Camogie final. Crazy that we did it at the time, but we did do it, I suppose, naively. But as the club has developed, you know, and because I suppose we have so many young players, all our players are under 12s down at the moment. We have a talented group of 20 or 30 young players. They all want to play both sports. They're talented at both sports and we want to ensure they get the opportunity to yeah. play it. And if we, we get anything out of the statement is that the two boards will work together meet on a regular basis to plan fixtures and have maybe a joint fixtures committee of some shape or form and it will definitely enhance both games yeah it seems to me that you were kind of pushed to great lengths to um get to this point to have to, you know i suppose the boards working together um in the future are, are you expecting to hear something back from the boards well I, I do hope i do hope the two of them will work together in the future um 
I'm looking forward to the next monthly county board camogie meeting and the ladies footballers, the ladies meeting, that hopefully something was put in place when the two boards met that will work in the future and will improve things going forward. Brilliant. And um, I'm sure a lot of other clubs are looking on, feeling that lacking ladies, you've, you've really led the way maybe for um, you know, f for this going forward. Yeah, I hope so. I suppose the other thing I would like to add is I know both county boards and fixtures committee are volunteers. I know how hard they work. I know independently both boards are excellent and I don't want to criticise anyone who works so hard, but they do need to work together in order for things to work out going forward. Great, so, and we can expect to see that statement on our, our on Facebook page very soon. Very soon, <laughs> come funny, but you've heard it here exclusively on All About Sport. Well, Murray, um, we wish uh, Lacken ladies, um, the camogie and the football, um, huge success going forward, and, and hopefully um, that things are really going to turn around um, in the future. Thank you very much Thanks, for taking Louise. time to speak to us on All About Sport. Thank you very much. So I'd like to thank Murray Brady for taking the time to drop into the studio. So that's it for this week. I'll be back again at the same time next Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. If you'd like to feature on the show, simply Simply contact drumlinmedia at gmail.com or tweet me at Cavan TV Sports. So it's goodbye from me, Louise O'Reilly. Yeah.